Hello, everybody. I'm Ricky Smith, and this is Faith on Friday Presents. At Faith on Friday Presents, we're all about highlighting inspiring people, engaging topics, and small businesses. And don't forget, while you're here, to like, subscribe, and share our content with your network. Okay, so doctor's offices. I know, let that sink in. We have all kinds of doctors. We have family medicine doctors, internal medicine. We have surgeries. We have... We have more doctors than you can shake a stick at, but what is it that you really know about the physician that you actually see? Today, we're going to talk to Dr. Jennifer Maloku, who's going to give us all the inside scoop behind the curtains, if you will, about being a physician and what we as patients can need to or ought to know. Y'all say hello to Dr. Jennifer Maloku. Hey, Dr. Jen. Hello. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate you, my friend. Well, thank you for having me on. It's a pleasure, as you, always. You are going to be a rock star in advance. So <laughs> let me ask you, Jennifer, we're just going to jump right in because there's so many questions that we need to know about. And, and one of the first questions that I want to ask is this. Tell me a little bit about the difference between being a family physician than any other sort of physician that there is. What is it that you do differently? So a family physician is a physician that is specifically trained to take care of the entire family. And so we like to call ourselves um, your physician from birth until the grave. And so we take care of all ages from newborns to our wonderful oldest uh, patients. Okay. Now, in, and I love it. You said specially trained. I didn't know. I thought all physicians were trained in the same way unless they specialize for the lack of a better term. That's not necessarily true? Not necessarily. And so, you know, everybody goes to the kind of same basic, basic medical school and you do have experience through all of the parts of medicine. And so medical school is four years after you finish undergrad. Mm -hmm. um, the first two years, usually a lot of what we call basic science, where you're learning anatomy, physiology, and all of that. Mm -hmm. Then the last two years are really all clinical years, and you, you get a taste of everything, a little bit of pediatrics with the children, adult medicine, some of the specialty medicine, surgery, OB, delivering babies, and do all of that. And so when we graduate medical school, all of us have a sense of what it is to take care of anyone. Mm -hmm. After that, most doctors will go through anywhere from three to 12 years of extra training to specialize mm -hmm. in a field. And so family medicine spent three years really specializing in taking care of the family as a unit. And so taking care of kids, taking mm -hmm. care of adults, uh, taking care of geriatric problems, which is your older adults, taking mm -hmm. care of women's health issues. Um, other doctors will then specialize in their field. So for example, an OBGYN mm -hmm. will specialize in pregnancy deliveries and women's health issues specifically. Okay. Internists are a little interesting because they will train mm -hmm. for adult medicine, mm -hmm. um, which is a little generalized. And then they can go ahead and specialize in other parts of adult medicine. So their minimum training is three years post, but mm -hmm. then some of them will do extra training to be a heart doctor. Yeah. Those are your cardiologists oh, sure. or a kidney doctor, mm -hmm. a nephrologist, and it goes on and on, on and, and on. on. Wow. You had me at three to 12 years of extra training. Oh my gosh. So to me, that <laughs> just basically said, being a physician ain't for everybody, right? <laughs> No, it is not. It, it takes it. It takes some dedication, right? Because it's mm -hmm. a lot of years of training yeah. before you are allowed to independently go off on your own and see people. Wow, that that's just amazing to me. So, Dr. Jennifer, did you always want to be a physician when you were a little Jen running around? Is that what you wanted to be when you grew up? 
Yes and no, actually. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I was, I, I was one of those kids where even before I knew what a doctor was, when people asked me, what you're going to do when you grow up? I'm going to be a doctor. <laughs> and remember this, I, you know, I had no experience with doctors. We didn't have a doctor in my family. It just mm-hmm. sounded like a cool thing to say. <laughs> and then when I was in high school, um, you know, somebody asked me what you want to do when you grow up. And mm-hmm. I gave my usual answer if I want to be a doctor and this right. person laughed like they had never laughed before oh no and they looked at me and was like you know being a doctor is hard right and in my mind I was like and what are you <laughs> talking about and so I actually applied to medical school because someone told me that I couldn't that it was okay. too hard mm. for me to do but I was lucky to just um find my true love in medical school my true love of what it is that I do now which is taking care of people that is my husband is also my love I was gonna say you mean your husband (laughs) yeah I I was like this this may get me into a little bit of trouble because I got you covered I'm my husband in medical school too so it was a twofer that's that's true (laughs) so not only did your family get literally a doctor in the family and then you imported a doctor into the family you know well i'm I'm an overachiever like that there you go (laughs) (laughs) tell me what i can't do and i'll do it twice okay i like it so much (laughs) so dr jennifer the number of patients that you see i mean because for those of us who are patients, we hear a lot about, you know, the doctors, they only have seven minutes to see you. The doctor's bedside manner is really trash. And we question, what are they teaching y'all in school? When somebody asks you something about, you know, what is it about a doctor about you in particular as a physician is going to be different than somebody else, you know, the stereotype that I've heard. Mm. What's the difference? So family physicians are trained to work based off of relationships. And I'm going to be fair to a lot of my other colleagues. Um, There's just a lot of sick people in the world. There's a lot of um, morbidity is what we call it. And it's really a big word just to explain. There's a lot of illnesses. And that's the difference between, you know, my chest hurts. I can't get in to see my doctor for six months. Yeah. This is my chest hurts. I need to see my doctor next week, mm-hmm. right? And so if the doctor's offices don't have such full schedules, mm-hmm. then it takes you longer to get in to be evaluated. So it, it's one of those things that's not easy. People want access. They want to be able to walk into the doctor's sure. office today but they also want you to have 30 minutes to sit and talk to them. We don't mm-hmm. have enough doctors, especially in places like El Paso, but in a lot yeah. of places, we don't have enough doctors mm-hmm. for each doctor to spend 30 minutes with you and still be able to get you in mm-hmm. this week, right? Yeah. And so sometimes something got to give. But mm-hmm. um, family physician, I think especially um, because of that relationship we have with the entire family, Mm -hmm. we are trained specifically to build those relationships over time. Because I I have families where I see generations of family. You know, I I see a patient and her sister and both husbands and then their (laughs) adult kids and their little kids and grandma. So it's (laughs) like, family reunion because like oh you saw my sister last week let me yeah. tell you she lied to you she had three <laughs> slices of cake and I told her that her diabetes was gonna act out so I get I get all yeah so when you come to me and be like really I've only been eating salads I was like you know what I saw your sister last week that was not what she told <laughs> she me. already dimed you out <laughs> mm-hmm. so let's let's get back on track now let, let, <laughs> let's get to the truth of this issue let, let's work on that's it. good you know one of the things too as, as patients, we don't know what to expect when we go into a doctor's office. We will go in because my finger hurts. So we naturally assume that our doctor's going to look at our finger and, and get us out of there. That's it. But what should we really be expecting? What can we as patients bring to the appointment? So there are many ways that as patients, we can help our doctors take better care of them. Mm -hmm. First of all, is knowing yourself and knowing your health. Um, 
I can't tell you how many times patients are, well, I'm taking five pills. I'm like, which pills are they? Like, I don't know. Oh. I tell them, like, I'm like, you know what? You should not be putting something into your mouth that you don't know what it's called and what it does. Mm. Right. And I know that our medicines have, you know, if, if it's not a hard name, we don't name it. <laughs> but you can write it down. You can take a picture Right, because that then helps me. So then I know if I need to write a new medicine for you, mm -hmm. uh, to not write something that clashes with something that you're already taking. Mm -hmm. um, knowing your history is important. Knowing your family's history, that is important. Mm -hmm. Because you may be worried about your finger that's hurting right now. Mm -hmm. But as your doctor, my job is not just to take care of you now, but to, to make sure that you're in the best possible health that you wow. can so wow. i'm worried about the fact that you haven't had a mammogram in three years mm. or that we haven't checked your cholesterol in two years because right. while right now your finger is hurting mm -hmm. those are the things that i know can hurt you mm -hmm. long term, right wow. those are the things that will cause people you know he was just fine and he was in church praising and yeah. he just dropped on because he had a heart attack you right. know what i'm saying mm -hmm. And, and so then those we had are just the seen the doctor yesterday because yeah. his finger hurt. Because his finger hurt. But they're yeah. like, well, why are you asking me about my cholesterol? I'm just here because my finger hurt. Mm -hmm. Right. And so yeah. we we need to take care of all of that. And that's mm -hmm. a focus a lot of the times. Yeah. That that is so good. Because a lot of times we, you know, we were raised, you know, the doctors know everything. And whatever the doctor says, that is what we're going to do. What do you say to that? No, <laughs> we don't know everything. We wish we knew everything. Uh, but I tell people that my role as a physician is to bring my knowledge into the room. And mm. based on your wishes, your cultural identity, what it is that's important to you, bring that knowledge to help you make the decision for what is in your best interest. Yeah. Um, I want people to ask questions. I want to be sure that they understand why we're doing what we're doing mm -hmm. and use that information to make the best decisions for them. Yeah. Are there many times that I wish my patients would make a different decision? Yes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you got to make a decision for what's in, based on what's important to you sure. um, and what's in your best interest. Yeah, that's amazing. So, Dr. Jennifer, tell everybody where you're located and what hospital you're at. So I am an academic physician and work for Texas Tech University Health Science Center. And our family medicine clinic is at 9849 Kenwood Street mm -hmm. in the Northeast of El Paso. Yeah. So y'all, she is here in El Paso, Texas. So there's that. Jennifer, you know, there's another thing I was thinking of. You know, you you mentioned something that you want, you want your patients to ask questions. But a lot of times, and because you said two things, ask questions and cultural questions you know, the, the cultural divide of things. In some cultures, to ask a physician a question is almost disrespectful. So I've never seen you before as a physician. Um, I have to come to you. I don't know you. You don't know me from Adam. Is there a way that, that I could just pop in and, and say, hi, I'm going to be your new patient. I just wanted to meet you. Can you even do that? Yeah, our patients come to established care. They're like, you know what? I need a new doctor. Mm. I don't need anything right now, but mm. I just need to establish care. Those are the best appointments for me because mm. I can. we can feel each other out, right? Because oh. there's nothing wrong that I have to take care of, right? Mm -hmm. So I can talk to you, understand your health history, your family's health history, things that are important oh. to you, mm -hmm. Um and that way, and I, I leave little notes all over people's charts, because that way, then I know how to approach you. And then yeah. in learning you, you know, I'm, I'm big about body language, right? Because you know mm -hmm. how when your mouth is saying one thing and your face and your body is saying oh, yeah. something else, right? <laughs> and so, you know, I'm all excited about this thing and I'm talking and I, I, I see the end and I'm like, okay, well, first of all, I need you to tell me what you understood from what I said. And mm -hmm. I'll tell them, I was like, you don't look too happy with this plan. Tell me what it is that you don't agree with. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, sometimes we have to make that invitation to patients sure. to 
challenge us or ask questions because you are right. There are some cultures or, or norms where people grew up that you don't question people yeah. in authority. And mm-hmm. so, you know, they're like, well, they said this. I don't know, it sounds a little bit crazy to me, but I, I can't say anything to them. And then right. they go back and they Google it or they ask their Ugh. neighbor twice removed. And sometimes they get the wrong advice. I love so. that the neighbor twice removed because, you know, yeah. now it's always somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody. Yeah. It's never a direct relationship. I love that. And then, you know, the, the we Google everything. If you sneeze and go on Google, you could walk away thinking that you have now a tubal pregnancy. <laughs> yeah, this is the truth. And you're about to die next week. This is the truth, right? So what do you say to those patients who are, you know, physicians in their own right? You know, they they are their own online MD. Those are tough because that's the problem with information. Mm. When there's a lot of it, it's always hard to know what's real and what's not. Mm-hmm. and who's being disingenuous and who's trying to sell you something, yeah. you know, and, you know, I have patients who are medicines for their blood pressure and diabetes, but they Googled somewhere that somebody said you shouldn't because they're trying to sell you a capsule that has garlic and ginseng and something else, right? you know, and, and it's not clear there, but, you know, they will make a convincing argument mm-hmm. that that sure. medicine you're taking for your blood pressure, your diabetes is going to kill you. And, you know, the, 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 the buzzword is, once they tell you it's natural, then it has to be good for you, right? Because if it's natural, Mm -hmm. it has to be good for you. Mm -hmm. But that's not true. There are actually things in nature that are poisons and um, are there to kill you. Those are natural too, but they will kill you. And so- Wow. So basically stop going online. Don't, don't, don't. To check stuff. Mm -mm, Don't Google it. I mean, especially if you do not have the knowledge to be able to discern what's real. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You know, and you also have those patients who believe that if I go to the doctor, they're going to find something like you all work on commission. (laughs) I know that that, that's not me. So here's the thing we pay, we, 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 we get paid for every patient that we see, you know, Mm -hmm. again, bills got to be paid. My mortgage, Mm -hmm. Yes. The, the fact that I'm a doctor doesn't pay my mortgage is the fact that I get paid for being a doctor. That pays oh, my that's mortgage. so good. But, 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 but that aside, um, you know, it's whether you have 10 problems or two problems, right? Mm-hmm. I'm, I guess I'm being a physician gets paid the same yeah. for the most part. And it's not mm-hmm. about, you know, it's not about, how many diagnoses we find in you. Mm -hmm. Yes, we sometimes get paid more for complex patients. So I don't want to lie and be like, you know, no, it's the same regardless of what you have going on. Mm -hmm. But that's because the more complex you are, the more time, the more thought, and the more goes into taking care of you, but Mm -hmm. not because we just want to make yeah. up diagnosis yeah like y'all yeah. work on commission because i know some yeah, folks who, that's who believe just that yeah i know this and then, it works finally what do you tell patients who are intimidated by you as a physician not just a woman not just a woman of color but you are a woman of color who is a physician that can be extremely intimidating to some patients how do you settle them down I have a PhD in people. And so <laughs> it's it's really get it's really meeting people where where they are. Um yeah. I am not afraid to talk about my worries. I'm not afraid mm-hmm. to talk about my children or my husband. Whatever helps mm-hmm. break the ice because when people see that you're struggling mm-hmm. with the same things that they're struggling with, it humanizes you. Right. as a physician you know you know mm-hmm. i don't know how many times you know somebody will be in and then you know in the middle of the phone ring or something like i'm so sorry that's my my teenager i just let me yeah. just look at it and i'd be like yeah i know how those teenagers are like everything is an emergency right oh sure they saw you in the morning they didn't pack it and you so once we start talking about our kids they're mm-hmm. like okay this is a mom just like me and this yeah. is and so we try to humanize it because mm-hmm. I, I i bring in my personal 
experiences into yeah. our, our consultation and I'm open to them and that allows them to be open to me. Yeah, I, there's just, I have so many questions and I know I can't keep you because you still have patients you need to see. <laughs> so Dr. Jennifer, somebody just wanted to reach out and be like, yay, Dr. Jen, thank you. I'd love to come and see you. Where could they reach you? And so um, our clinic number is 915-215-5500. And if you call and make an appointment, we will be happy to take care of you. We have a ton of great doctors and I see patients there too. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. Awesome. Don't worry, y'all. If y'all didn't get that number, everything's going to be in the description below. And if you or someone that you know has an engaging topic or an inspiring story or a small business that needs to be highlighted, go over to our website at faithonfriday.com. Send us a message. I'd love to hear from you. Dr. Jennifer, my friend, before oh. I let you go, girl, you know, it we have to play this game. It is that time. <laughs> so the game is called This or That, and it's so simple. I'm just going to give you the choice of two things, and you just tell me which one you like the best. Are you ready to play? I don't think so, but I don't think I have an option <laughs> <laughs> That's true, girl, because I will come for you. I know where you live. Anyway, let's do this. All right. Flowers or plants? Flowers. Hotel or tent? Hotel. What's with the attitude, ma'am? I'm like, no, we're not no, going. We outside. don't do. No, we're not going outside. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. Water park or amusement park? I'm scared. Water park. <laughs> now that is surprising, my friend. That's surprising. All right. Practical I don't like heights. <laughs> oh, okay. That explains it. All right. Practical joker or I don't play like that. I don't play like that. I know they're mean. <laughs> I, I just think they're mean. Ugh. Candlelight or moonlight? Ooh, ah, that one's tough. Candlelight, because mm -hmm. uh, the moonlight means I have to be outside. I was so gonna we'll say you're light. outside. <laughs> <laughs> okay, planner or I make it up as I go. I am totally a planner. Mm, I can see that about you. I do. Okay, go all day or I need a nap. Ooh, sleep is my favorite hobby. I need a nap. <laughs> Girl, I am with I you. usually go all day, but sleep is my hobby. I wish oh. I could put that on my resume. I, <laughs> I would hire you. <laughs> when you're talking, Jennifer, do you say pecan or pecan? Pecan. Okay. You didn't seem sure at first. I was not because I had to think about it. <laughs> See, now you're going to walk away thinking about this all the rest of the day. When you meet somebody, what's the first thing you notice? Their eyes or their smile? Smile. Uh, and and you yourself, are you a words of affirmation person or do you prefer acts of service? Acts of service. Okay, that's interesting. And finally, what would you tell your 13-year-old self right now? You go, girl. I love it. <laughs> and to that person that said medical school is too hard, he's going to come and see you one day. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Jennifer, thank you so much for joining us. This has been fun. No, thank you for having me. As always, it's always a blast talking to you. Oh, it's my pleasure as well. And for you all, don't worry. This is it this time, but there'll be more next week. So we'll see you next time on Faith on Friday Presents. Mm -hmm.